Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Yeah, it has been a while since uh, my last video, but um, something has given me a little boost uh, in order to bring you a new video and I have just acquired uh, the locomotive um, similar to this one in this photograph. Now as you can see we have the South Shield station. Well, we've got that, we've got the rolling stock, but what we haven't got until now is a G5. Um, the running number on this one is 67253, but I've got the sister locomotive, um, which ends in 47. Um, it was stationed at Gateshead Sheds, and um, yeah. So that's what we're going to look at today, is, um, well, recreating this scene. Now this G5 here is pulling the suburban carriages away from the station into the sidings. And um, so I want to try and create this scene. This Before we have a look at the locomotive, um, I have finally found the photograph, um, what I was talking about earlier. As you can see, um, another shot of a G5 pulling some rolling stock into the silence, uh, sidings which were further along the line. And you can see the South Shield signal box to the right um, there quite clear, clearly. Um, if you were looking out of the window here, you would see the actual station as you were coming out of it. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to show you this photograph before we look at the locomotive. And here she is, the G5, which has come from TMC. Now it's been specially renumbered, as you can see there, 67247, um, which is the sister locomotive that we had seen in the photograph. Now, <laughs> the, the detail on this locomotive is exquisite, especially inside the cab. Now I haven't looked at the instructions yet, but I'm hoping we can um, be able to remove the roof and have a closer look inside, because I'd like to fit some figures um, into there if it's possible. So there you go. Now it does come with a detail pack um, with some um, exhaust pipes and some lanterns so I might um, fit those as well and uh, yeah I'm not sure if it's got any pickups on the pony truck wheels um, it doesn't look like it has so I'm just hoping <laughs> that the locomotive can work on the on the track work well I found that quite easy to fit the decoder in um, all I had to do was just remove three screws um, one screw which was here at the front um, on the buffer just before the buffer plate and the last two were at the back there so that was quite easy so I've done that, and one thing I've noticed about the body that the whole of the boiler has got a heavy leaded weight inside. I suppose that's to keep the traction on the driving wheels, otherwise it'd be quite a light locomotive. So I shall now reassemble this, and um, we shall try it on the layout. Um, here is the date detail pack uh, as you can see we've got three lamps and uh, some shovels in there and some doors and um, obviously we've got some um, ladder plates there which will go on the front um, of the loco I'll probably glue them on um, that's for sure but uh, as for the rest of the details I'll do that um, as and when you've got some brake pipes in there as well as I can see so yeah, there's a little bit of nice detailing there to add 
to a locomotive. Um, the roof does not come off, which uh, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed about. Um, but I will try and get some figures in there at some point. We'll just hold that there. You can see roughly all the gauges and levers inside. So at some point I will try and get some figures in there. Possibly before I put the, the doors on there. Right, so I shall continue with this and uh, hopefully we'll see it running on the layout. I have just noticed that there are some pickups on this pony truck. I don't know if you can see them but there's one there and there's one there. So yeah, so there's, there is pickups on all eight wheels. So, we shall see what it looks like when it's running on the layout. Before we see this locomotive in action, this is just a few little details I want to point out to you. Um, I have added some of the detail impact to this locomotive, um, like the lamps, the exhaust pipe, and the three link chain coupling which is here at the front I mean some people don't like to fit them because they interfere with this this coupling but if you um, put the lower chain over the hook and get it back on the, on the tie bar as it were um, with, a, with a tiny bit of super glue um, it'll keep it out of the way of this coupling so it, it, it should couple up with the rolling stock without any problems um, so as you can see there it is swinging backwards and forwards without hitting the chain link I thought I'd mention that uh, another thing I've done as well I've put a little tiny drop of oil on these sprung buffers because I have had sprung buffers seize up in the past so I just thought I'd uh, share that little tip with you and I've done something similar to the back I haven't added the doors yet as you can see because uh, I've got to add some um, crew to this locomotive and I've done something similar with the back with the chain I've fitted the three link chain on the back as well along with the uh, vacuum exhaust pipes and I've put a tail lamp there as well um, for when it's re running um, in reverse so yeah so that is ready to do uh, the test run so I'll have to clear the tracks because there's lots of um, trains in the way so I've got to clear the the V2 that's stuck in the platform from the last running session so I shall remove that and then we can test run the locomotives just see how good it is um, regarding going over points crossovers and that sort of thing but uh, I don't think I'd have any issues because it's got pickups on this pony truck here on all four wheels so let's give it a run out
While the locomotive's on test, I uh, decided to paint these figures, uh, which represents uh, a couple just uh, taking their dog for a walk. <laughs> but the dog is underneath the lady's arm, as you can see. Looks like a black Labrador pup. Oh, there you go. Looks like a black Labrador pup. So it just adds that little bit of detail to the mill. Right, so let's get back to running in this locomotive. I've now coupled up the engine to four suburban coaches, so we shall see how it does up Stevenson's bank. So let's see. As you can see, uh, four coaches is probably one too many, so I shall take one off. Okay, looks like there'll just have to be two coaches. Right, so as you can see, I've brought the locomotive back to the bench. Um, the reason being, instead of taking another coach off um, the rake, um, I'm just going to have a look to see what space I've got in the body um, to see if I can add some additional weight. Um, so I can try and at least keep the three coaches that we have for this locomotive. So I'm just going to see what I've got in the way of space to add some ballast as it were. Right, so I've removed the body and um, as you can see inside there is room for some additional weight inside the um, 
water tanks as it were there and there but as for anywhere else that's it it's all we've got in the way of space and this is quite weighty on its own so let's see what happens when I add some more additional weight to this body right so I filled up the two saddle tanks with some M4 nuts stainless and brass just to add um, some extra weight so we shall see what happens now right so let's try again and what I've done now is I've put the fourth coach back in so we'll try it with four coaches again and I've also altered the speed steps um, in the controller to see if that has any effect but we shall see So four carriages is still a bit too much for the locomotive on this um, gradient. So what I've done is I've taken one out and uh, we'll see what happens with three. Um, it should do it, especially with the additional weight um, placed into the local body. So we shall see.
Well, she finally made it at last um, after her third attempt, I think, adding the ballast to the tanks, um, give her that extra traction to get the three carriages up um, Stevenson's bank. I mean, yeah, I think four coaches was asking a bit much of her. I think um, <laughs> with the space um, inside the body, it's hardly... Um, any room inside there for extra ballast so yeah right so let's uh, couple the engine back up to the front of the train Before we take a look at the training station, I just wanted to show you this photograph from 1905. Now that is a G5 locomotive, but it would have been in the green livery. And as you can see, there's uh, four coaches on there, but that's a different type of rolling stock. They're the shorter um, suburban coaches from the early... Uh, well, from the late 1800s to early 1900s. So, yeah. So, I think at last I finally achieved what I've been trying to achieve with this station. So, let's have a look. So, after all this time, <laughs> I think I've got it right at last. <laughs> um, yeah. So, it kind of matches what we have in the photograph. Alright, it's a later period, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased now. I finally got my dream um, station together at long last. So, let's see it leave the station. Right, so we've brought the G5 and its train back to Newcastle just for one final last look before we close the video. And uh, yeah, um, overall, I think the locomotive could have done with adding some more weight to the locomotive because of its, um, well, because of its size. Uh, <laughs> but there's not a lot of room in there to add more weight to it, so just to gain that bit of traction, extra traction. But uh, these locos never pulled that many coaches anyway. Um, fours and threes mostly. But um, yeah. So yeah. Right. Um, I think I've achieved something I've always wanted to achieve by having a, a locomotive that actually ran uh, into South Shields. Um, these locomotives ran on the South Shields to Sunland um, line and um, yeah so I think I've achieved that so it's almost a, a dream come true as it were so 
I think that's all we got time for this week. Thanks again for watching, and um, next time I'll see you, we'll be over at Jar Road. We've got a little building that needs finishing, and um, yeah, so I'm quite looking forward to making a start on that. So, stay safe everybody, and thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye.